Lor Young sits at the junction of the Yi and Lor Rivers. It was celebrated in verse by the Song Dynasty scholar O Young Shu as being uniquely suited to the cultivation of wonderful peonies. Modern scientific soil analysis has proved him right with the soil containing exactly the right combination of five key minerals to aid the peony's growth. Almost all of contemporary ornamental peonies are the result of human intervention. It has been a long journey from the simple, ancient, single ring of white petals to the lavish blooms people see today. In those far-off days of the Song Dynasty, people must have been amazed when they saw that first purple peony exploding with such an abundance of petals. But despite the best efforts of the horticulturists, it died out. Unable to produce seeds, it could only be propagated by cuttings. And in the centuries of warfare and disruption that followed the fall of the Northern Song Dynasty, the rootstock was lost. Modern horticulturists, with their grafting skill, have been able to engineer an approximation of the Song Dynasty flower, but none can match the natural perfection of the original Wei's purple. This year, however, Jung has made a discovery that sets her pulse racing. Such a rare and famous flower is beyond mere monetary value. A swap is the only way to trade. <laughs> In exchange for some of her most precious plants, Jung finally gets her hands on a modern Wei's purple peony. But she finds that it falls far short of the supposed 700 petals. Such a rare flower needs more than mere human intervention. A September rainstorm brings some unwelcome guests. These tiny snails have a voracious appetite. For the peonies which are preparing to overwinter, their arrival could spell disaster. Jung has set up the perfect growing environment. This test field is over 100 square meters. Its soil has been specially enriched to provide the perfect peony growing environment. But these ideal conditions have not gone unnoticed by the snails either. Even with the benefits of modern technology, horticulturists trying to breed new plant varieties face all kinds of problems. The seasons change and this year's flowers fade from glory.
but this test site is Jung's field of dreams. She is in no doubt of the difficulty she faces. The best she can do is inch by inch, step by step, get closer and closer in approximation to the fabled Waze Purple. She has named her own latest attempt, the Lord Lao Purple, after Lao Tzu, the founding saint of Taoism. On the evening before it's due to come into bloom, Jung is restless. Her test field sprouts with 30 years of toil and tears. All her prayers are now vested in the Lord Lao Purple. At 10 a.m. the next morning, the Lord Lao reveals itself to the world. Although it looks gorgeous, its petal number is just over 500, not the 700 of the way purple. Try, try, and try again. Zhang is not daunted. She will take the modern ways purple that she got in her swap with the other grower and use it to cross-pollinate with her own Lord Lao. There's no such thing as failure until you give up trying. In their centuries of plant breeding, gardeners and horticulturists like Zheng Shu Ling have created a seemingly endless variety of peonies. When Ouyang Shu came to Luoyang in the 11th century, he recorded what he saw in the record of Luoyang peonies. The names given to the flowers in the book bear witness to the esteem in which they were held. The Luoyang Folk Culture Museum tracks down and preserves all aspects of Chinese culture. And the peony has entered deeply into the daily life and culture of the people of Luoyang. When Chinese people love detail. The intricacy of the flowers and the complexity of producing them are part of an aesthetic that has been the root of peony breeding for thousands of years. In folklore and legend, peonies take their place alongside auspicious animals like the phoenix as a symbol of prosperity and abundance. <laughs> 